Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I want to share a really cool and rare case with you today, um, something I've only seen in, um, in teaching sets or study sets and never have actually recognized in the wild, so to speak. I've never made this diagnosis at all in my practice, but it's so distinct that once you know about it, it's pretty easy to recognize. So these are large antigen hair follicles, antigen meaning they're in their growing stage. And when we go in and look closer, um, if you've looked at a normal follicle, you know there's layers. The outside kind of pale layer is the outer root sheath. And then there's an inner layer that has little red granules. That's the inner root sheath. And those red granules are called trichohyaline granules. But this is not normal. So the outside cells are about normal size, but the inside inner root sheath cells are massively, massively enlarged. They have huge nuclei with pale kind of uh, cleared out chromatin. There's also numerous trichohyaline granules. They're usually little tiny round dots, uh, red dots like this. These are big, massive globules of, of uh, red trichohyaline granules. You can see it more down here. And then the, the little basaloid uh, matrical cells at the root of the follicle are kind of getting pushed out of the way and replaced. Everything is being replaced by this massive expanded inner root sheath um, uh, keratinocytes that have large, weird looking nuclei and huge red um, trichohyaline granules. So what is causing this change? Uh, let me show you another view. This is the, the view, you know, with the hair follicle, unless you get a perfect cut, if it's cut at all at an angle, you won't see the whole connection all the way up to the top. Oh, wait, here's maybe a normal. I was going to see if there was a normal follicle uh, to show you for contrast. All of these are little tiny, uh, either vellus or vellus hairs. Not, I wanted to find another big antigen hair to show you for contrast, but maybe I can show you this is kind of a, a no, more normal. It's a small, probably vellus hair. But look, normally this is outer root sheath. The inner root sheath is just this little layer here. And then the developing hair shaft is in the very middle. And there's a few of those little red trichohyaline granules. So what I'm showing you down below is massively uh, exploded and, and expanded and filled with these huge inner root sheath keratinocytes. And when you follow this up, I'll show you another slide. Here we go. When you follow it up, this is a same biopsy, different cuts. So we're seeing now what happens as the hair follicle gets closer to the surface. And the center, oh wait, hold on. I think I've got a better view over here. It was a little bit better. No, maybe this one is the best one. The center of the follicle, as we get higher up away from that inner root sheath, now all we have left is the outer root sheath. And if you need a refresher on this, you can go look at my normal skin histology video and it'll show you the different layers of the follicle. You can see a few of those really massive, weird looking keratinocytes there with big trichohyaline granules. And then all that kind of disintegrates and what's left is weird, dense keratin with some parakeratosis. And what's supposed to be here normally is a hair shaft, right? But the hair shaft, which is normally made of dense keratin that's packed nicely together into like a cylinder, right? The hair that comes out uh, of the top and is what we see on top of our head. Uh, this is now replaced by this really distorted, not very well held together keratin that kind of fizzles out and makes this little protrusion out the surface where the hair shaft should be. Instead of a hair shaft, we just have this keratin kind of plug filling this up. So this process is called trichodysplasia spinulosa. Long, fancy name. I'll say it again. Trichodysplasia spinulosa. And this is a unique phenomenon that happens usually in patients that are immunosuppressed, most often in solid organ transplant patients, but it can sometimes be seen in the setting of chemotherapy or other types of severe uh, immunosuppression. Like I think if they're doing like induction chemo to do say a bone marrow transplant, I think this can happen. And uh, this was described, I think first in the late 1990s. And from the beginning, I think people theorized that it was probably a virus, uh, but uh, because this was in immunosuppressed patients and also because the cells look like they have a virus uh, kind of problem. Let me go back to that other slide here that I had earlier. Uh, these, these large nuclei, uh, are kind of reminiscent of the viral changes you can see in HPV, human papillomavirus, like in a wart, uh, in a verruca or condyloma. But uh, people had tried testing for HPV and not found that. And instead, it took some years, but they finally figured out this is caused by a form of polyomavirus, not papilloma, but polyoma, a human polyomavirus. And now that, that virus, I think, still goes by the name of trichodysplasia spinulosa-associated polyomavirus. 
Uh, I'm not aware if it causes any other disease other than this, but uh, that's why it only occurs in people that have bad immunosuppression uh, because their immune system goes down and then the polyomavirus uh, causes uh, this problem. And there are other types of polyomaviruses that can cause other human diseases. But uh, what happens is the inner root sheath gets infected. I don't know why the outer root sheath seems to be totally spared. It looks completely normal to me. It's only these inner root sheath cells. And because these cells uh, are messed up by the virus, uh, they are not functioning correctly to make the normal hair shaft. And instead you get this weird uh, inner root sheath type keratin that just gets packed together and it comes out of the surface. And what happens is that these patients present with multiple slightly reddish papules around the hair follicles, usually on the nose, the cheeks, the chin, the central face is the most common area. And it can be really extensive. They can have numerous papules and many of those papules will have little spines, little spikes of keratin. And that's what we were seeing in that, uh, that other slide there at the surface is that instead of hair coming out, the hair goes away and that disorganized, distorted keratin comes out and makes a little uh, spike or spine uh, that's coming out of the follicle. It's kind of fragmented here, so we can't really see it. And so that's why the name trichodysplasia, because it has this weird dysplastic uh, look because of the viral effect inside the hair, the hair follicle epithelium. And then at the surface, it makes spines. So there's the name spinulosa. Oh, look, we do have a normal hair. Here's a normal uninfected or, well, actually, the, it looks like it probably has a little bit of the infection. Those cells are a little bigger than normal. But this is a more normal looking hair follicle, not nearly as massive and distorted as that other one that I showed you uh, in the middle section. So uh, that, that's what is going on here. Hold on, I think there's even more, more views of this follicle. Yeah. Here we can see going from the inner root sheath infected cells with polyomavirus viral cytopathic effect. Instead of making hair shaft, we have dense keratin packed together. And then it's coming out the surface right here and making a little spike or a little spine. And uh, I'll show you a paper here. Um, I'll link to that. This was not the very first report of this, but uh, a really nice paper by uh, a, a friend of mine and one of my uh, uh, Dermpath Heroes, Dr. Leonard Sperling, who is the, the guru of, of alopecia and hair pathology. He wrote, literally wrote the book on alopecia pathology. He's also an amazing speaker and a really funny guy and really nice and, uh, and a great artist too. He's a, a man of many talents. And Dr. Sperling published this back in the early 2000s, 2004, I think, in the JAD. Um, and he, um, I love the way he said it. He's, he's a, a guy who has a great way with words. And he said... Um, it's, it suggests that the entire machinery of the follicular bulb, see if I can do that without the pop-up, nope. The entire machinery of the follicular bulb is devoted to the manufacture of inner root sheath type keratin. I love that. It's like the whole hair is just completely overrun by those inner root sheath cells and that it's taken over the entire hair follicle and now it's not making normal hair. It's making these little spines of inner root sheath type keratin. So I thought that was a fun uh, way to say that. I'll put a link to his paper down below. So anyway, this is a nice example from an old uh, teaching set slide. And this was a child who had had uh, uh, severe immunosuppression uh, because of actually in their case, I think they had an autoimmune disease and they had heavy immunosuppression for it. And they ended up developing multiple spiky papules on the face and a biopsy showed this. So uh, a very unique clinical scenario and a very unique uh, 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 microscopic picture that's really quite beautiful, even though this is disfiguring to the patient. Um, it's quite beautiful microscopically because of the massive trichohyaline granules and the very large, weird looking virally infected inner root sheath cells. So I hope you enjoyed that. I, I, again, you may never see this in practice, but if you happen to, or if you see it on a test, now you'll know uh, what you're you're looking for. I, I don't think really anything else that I've ever seen uh, looks like this. So trichodysplasia spinulosa. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.